Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Izuku knew about his future? Deku X Momo, Part 1. So before we start, go check out the author of this fanfic, Raphael Out. Link is in the description. Also subscribe to our channel, and like this video. So let's begin the video. It was a bright sunny day, just like any other in the city of Mustafa in Japan, the birds were chirping in the air, as everyone was going about their business, including one plain looking boy with messy green hair, who was walking along the street with a smile on his face before he made a slight turn, and entered a sports store. Welcome to Midori Sports oh Midoriya said the storekeeper, as he recognized the son of two of his best friends. What can I do for you today? I'm just here for a few things Mr. Midori replied to the messy green-haired boy, as he lifted up a large soft art gun, or a nerf gun, as some may call it, that was in the shape of a rifle. He examined it for a moment, letting his finger trace around each of the 24 slots for the darts, before lifting the thing up to his face, and much to the surprise of Mr. Midori, he braced a buttstock against his shoulder, and stood in a textbook tactical standing position. How much? 4500 yen said Mr. Midori, causing Izuku to raise an eyebrow in slight surprise before shrugging, and placing the requested amount on the counter, along with a piece of paper a few other items I need Mr. Midori. Would you mind collecting them for me please? The shopkeeper took the list, and his eyebrow rose at the list of what seemed like completely mismatched items, and since most of the items, bar one, were on his side of the aisle anyway, he had no problem collecting them. Out of the corner of his eye he did see Izuku remove a small container and a brush from his pocket and started applying it all over the gun. Definitely wasn't painted, as it didn't seem thick enough. He would insist Izuku clean it up if he made a mess of his counter, though he doubted he would have to. Izuku always seemed to clean up his messes. One for all stockpiles energy right? Ask Izuku after he had eaten All Might's hair and then used that stockpiled energy throughout our body right? That's about it, why? I have often heard expert weapon users say that in order to be the best you can't think of your weapon as a weapon, said the messy green-haired boy, as he looked at his hands. You have to think of it as an extension of yourself. Could you use all for one in a similar way? Use it to empower the equipment you use. That's a good question young Midoriya said all might, rubbing his finger against his chin. I mean I did try using support items when I first started out, but they couldn't take more than 20% of my full power, but to do it, as you say, to actually attempt to power weapons with a quirk, well I would like to say no, but I'm not sure anyone has actually tried. He looked around at the sheer amount of junk they were surrounded by, and picked up a soft art gun that someone had discarded. He lifted it up, and then concentrated all his power towards the gun, he imagined it flowing through the weapon, empowering it, making it stronger. Izuku could only watch amazed, as the very air around All Might seemed to ripple with energy. All Might lifted the gun straight up in the air, and lightly tapped the trigger. The soft art flew straight up into the air, before gravity started to pull it back down, and it landed straight on top of his forehead like a unicorn's horn. Well that was a bust. Said All Might, as he looked at Izuku. Not quite replied the messy green-haired boy you said that in order to transfer your quirk, I needed to consume your DNA. What if your DNA is not just used to transfer the quirk, but transfer power, as well? He then grabbed the gun from All Might's hand, and the dart from his head, and loaded the toy. He then grabbed a piece of broken, sharp metal, and used it to slice open his hand. Young Midoriya what do you think here? Izuku didn't give him a chance to complete his response before he lifted the gun straight up into the air and activated his powers, just like All Might had instructed him how to, just moments ago. Izuku's entire body and the toy gun lit up before he pulled the trigger. Boom. That was the sound of the sound barrier breaking, as the force released by that gun was enough that All Might himself had to brace himself. And in a second it was all over, leaving the number one hero staring in shock at the messy green-haired boy with the most infectious grin he had ever seen. You were saying something sensei? Asked Izuku cockily, now he had a way to not only pass, but score in the entrance exam tomorrow morning. Boom. Well that makes 20. Said Izuku, as he threw away the dart gun he had bought just a few hours ago. Even if he had infused it with the power of one for all, after infusing his whole body to withstand the impact of course, there was only so much power a toy gun could take before it became a melted pile of junk. He had realized something when he pulled the trigger, and the toy gun had melted last night, he'd hardly felt the recoil, at all. This was the first time he used one for all, and that gun had fired what should have been the equivalent of a 100% all might smash, but he could hardly feel the recoil. He got a way to get through the test despite having absolutely no control over his quirk. Or at least he hot away before it bloody started to melt in his hands. Oh well, hopefully he'd done enough too. He heard a large crack, and spun around to see several buildings collapsing, as a massive robot appeared, absolutely scaring everyone, and everything around it. 
You just had to break now didn't Yamadar Izuka, as he instantly pulled out two soft dart gun revolvers and aimed it at the giant thing, as the power of one for all flowed through his body. Bang. Bang. The sheer power behind those two shots managed to push the thing back by one giant step, but it was unfortunately not enough to destroy it, not by a long shot. Run you fools. Run Izuka bellowed at the students who'd frozen after he'd fired his guns, unable to believe that such a monstrosity could have been forced back. They didn't hesitate as each and every one of them tried to put as much distance between the metal monstrosity and themselves, save for a raven-haired kid with round and wide glasses, as he took a moment to glance at the kid who was giving them a chance to escape and continue on with this exam, a kid who he'd insulted just mere moments before the test began. The eater resolved right then and there to find this messy green-haired kid and apologize, no matter what the results would be. Meanwhile, Izuka was cursing as he saw a girl pinned under the rubble, the same girl had stopped him from falling just as he entered UA. His toy revolvers were out of bullets and had already started to melt, and that thing was nowhere near out of commission. Fortunately he'd pushed the thing far back so that he'd hopefully be able to get her out of there before that thing could close the distance again. That entire thought process took a little over a second to make, and in that second he'd already started to throw his revolvers away and chase after her. A second later he was running full speed towards her. Hey Izuka yelled as he got in real close can you make that rubble float. Yeah replied the girl as she nodded as she pressed her head against the rubble that was pinning her legs down, causing it to float up it's my legs, I think they're broken. If they're not broken then they're pretty close to it, Izuka thought as he reached her and pushed the floating rubble away. He could hear pain in every syllable she spoke, and one of her legs was bent the wrong way. He thought of lifting her up, carrying her bridal style out of the way, but before he could decide on a course of action, he suddenly noticed a shadow above them, and he knew in an instant what it was. Izuku felt the power of all for one course through his hand, as he spun around and punched straight up shouting Detroit Smash. Izuku felt all the bones in his left hand shatter, as the skin from his fingers, hand, wrist, and even his upper arm turned in paper to the sheer force he unleashed. The damage to the robot was even more extensive. Originally Izuka had thought that he'd found a way to use the full power of all for one, despite not having the body for it. He thought that the sheer amount of power that the guns released was the full power of one for all. And even with all that power it could only push that metal monstrosity back, staggering it a bit with each shot. As he watched the metal foot warp and contort back into itself due to the sheer air pressure of his punch alone, he knew just how naive he had been. Unfortunately, losing its foot was not enough to end the bloody thing, as it started to balance itself with his arms. Yes I've got no choice then Izuku said to himself before speaking aloud to the girl I'll save us, just try to save me in return okay. What the girl started to say, but Izuku didn't give her a chance to complete her question, as he launched himself into the air, breaking both his legs in the process. Detroit smash yelled Izuku, as he slammed his last working limb into the metal monstrosity's face, destroying it utterly, and falling unconscious with the pain that now racked the entirety of his body, his last thought was him hoping that the girl would be safe for the remainder of the exam. Are you happy now, Nezu? I think you've chosen a good person, Tashinori replied the principal whether he'll be a good successor is left to be seen. He won't just be good, he'll be a great successor. There is no doubt that replied to the sunken, skeletal form of the greatest hero in the world. But that's beside the point, what on earth were you thinking going after him like that? I needed to see it for myself, said Nezu the drive, that madness that you need to be a true hero. All Might grimaced at that. What the principal said was true. Well it was a hero's job to go out there and save lives, he took it to another level. To destroy one's body, to not just risk life and limb, but actively damage it, to literally tear your own body apart just to save a single life, well he was not denying that to do so wasn't heroic, it was also something that no sane person could do, especially on a day-to-day -day basis. It was also a trait that the young boy named Izuku Midoriya had in spades. That young girl could have died. Snarled All Might if something went wrong. If you were wrong about the length he would go to save her, if he acted in a way that you couldn't predict, she would have died. Are you not asking me to put my faith in the boy? Then what he will become, yes. But he is far from ready, he doesn't have an ounce of training, an ounce of experience. He doesn't even have control of his quirk for heaven's sake. And to top it all off. He's a free radical. Nezu finished, cutting off the number one ranked hero in the world. How long did it take him to figure out a way around his inexperience with one for all Tashinori? How long did it take him to figure out a way to use his quirk in a way that neither you nor your predecessors could have ever conceived? All might silence add words. The sheer power that is built up over the generations, the power that you can wield with the flick of your wrist is insane. The public sees All Might as nigh invincible, and there's a very good reason why they do so, continued Nezu. From what you've told me Izuku Midoriya will be even stronger than you. 
Furthermore from what you've told me the boy just might have just discovered how to use support weapons with 100% of one for all's power. The possibilities are terrifying. All Might didn't say a thing, well no hero worth their salt would solely rely on support items, the fact remained that a hero, who was properly equipped with support items, and had the ability to use them effortlessly, could potentially face, and even defeat enemies who would have destroyed the hero in other circumstances. Nezu was right, if Izuku could fully utilize one for all power, and boost that with compatible support items, then he would prove a far greater threat than all for one would have ever been, if Izuku turned to the side of evil. But, All Might knew that Izuku would never turn to the side of evil, and that he would never follow All for One's path. He had faith in his student, and he would trust Izuku with his life. He had entrusted him with his legacy after all. I just wish you would have had faith in me Nezu, I wish you had faith in my choice. All Might said with a completely even tone, but what is done is done, the question is though, what do we do now? Now we watch said Nezu after the showing he gave I have no doubt that Midoriya-san will have secured a place amongst the top, if he isn't on top it is. I have assigned Eraserhead to be 1A's homeroom teacher, you will need to begin training him to use his quirk, as soon as possible to ensure that Midoriya-san doesn't get expelled. About that said All Might, knowing full well about Izawa's tendency to expel any student who he thought didn't have the potential. I do have a few ideas on how to train him, if you're willing to listen that is interrupted the principal, but I also think you should simply ask him. What? Like I said he's a free radical, I'm sure he has a few interesting ideas on how to control one for all. Izuku was sitting on the floor of his room, meditating, the power of one for all dancing across his body. At his side lay one of his favorite comics about All Might, it was a fictional adventure of All Might finding this weak little kid, and training him, and raising him up to be a mighty warrior. The irony that this comic was his favorite when he was a kid was not lost on the messy green-haired boy. He always dreamed that he was the boy, that his consciousness, his very being, would be inserted into that kid when All Might took him, as his apprentice. But he never really thought about the implications of that until now. What if that did happen, what if his wish actually came true? Would he have gone through with it? Would he have taken control of that boy, ripping the kid's very soul out, and replacing it with his own? These questions danced across his mind because that very thing nearly happened to him. He could still remember it quite clearly, a face that he had only seen, and would ever see in his dreams. The sheer glee on that face when he realized that he was meeting one of his heroes, followed by the horror when he realized that he would essentially be killing off said hero, and then a quiet determination came upon that face, as he brought his hand together and spoke quietly to himself. As if praying to some unseen god before he dissolved into the wind, leaving behind a bowl of silvery white liquid. Izuku could only laugh at his reaction during that dream, he hadn't known what to think back then, he still didn't know what to think right now. All he could do was laugh mirthlessly at his past self, as he saw the absolutely clueless kid just crawl over to the bowl and touch the liquid. And with that touch he could suddenly recall memories that he knew for a fact weren't his, and yet were. He was an otaku, there was no doubt about them, he was a complete All Might fanboy, but these memories weren't of him going gaga over the hero All Might, they were of him going gaga over the hero Deku. He was All Might's number Twofen, after Sir Night Eye, and at the same time he was Deku's number Onifen. Izuku shook his head, he wasn't Aoyama after all. Why did I just think that? The entrance exam was this morning. He didn't even know if he passed, much less knew his future classmates well enough to comment on their personalities, he didn't even know what was selected. And yet at the same time he was sure that what he had just taught would turn out to be completely true. He let the power of one for all fade from his body. He could only use the power to brace for impacts that were created when he supercharged his weapons, his quirk seemed to absorb the recall of the blast. But even then he knew that he couldn't use 100% of one for all's power yet. If he tried to take a step in that state he would certainly tear every single muscle fiber and shatter all the bones in that leg. Even pulling the trigger of a toy gun felt like someone decided it would be a good idea to jump on his finger. But he fought through the pain and did what needed to be done, he wouldn't be the hero Deku if he didn't after all. Izuku snorted, if this had done nothing else, then it had restored his faith in himself, something that had been lost for a long long time. Now though, he would go to bed, he would need to speak to All Might tomorrow, today was the start of the last week of February, and term didn't start till the 1st of April. And he needed to get his quirk under control by then. After all, he knew for a fact that Izawa's threat of expulsion was quite real. Izuku was not worried though, he had an idea to get his quirk under control, and it was quite a good idea. So let me get this straight, said recovery girl in the most neutral voice she could manage. You now have the power of one for all, a power that is so great that All Might could wipe out entire cities with a flick of his wrist, a power that you have absolutely no control over. And you want to channel that power all over your body, repeatedly, all the while hoping that it does not turn your insides to dust or create an explosion that would wipe this school off the face of this earth. 
That's about right yes said Izuku calmly. That is the most stupid idea I have ever heard. Shouted recovery girl at the messy green haired boy, have you taken all leave of all your senses? And you? Her attention turned to All Might who looked genuinely scared for his life. You actually agreed to this insane idea. Have you actually gone insane Tashinori? You actually want him to do this? You yourself have clearly said that the boy cannot handle all your power, and yet you want him to do it anyway. He'll be dust before he has control of his quirk if we follow through with this bloody idea of yours. But all due respect, recovery girl, it was my idea, said Izuku, trying to calm the fuming nurse. It's also something that I have already done, with no visible ill effects. Explain. The sheer power in that one order scared the living daylights out of Izuku, and he hurriedly complied with that order, it's the same thing I do every single time I fire a shot recovery girl, the power starts from my legs, which seems to root me to the ground, flows through my whole body before flowing down through my hands. And then into the gun at which point I tap the trigger releasing all that power in one blast, and somehow simultaneously absorbing the recoil at the same time. The minute the recoil is fully absorbed the power automatically dissipates until I call it up again for another shot. The danger is that doing that is unbelievably dangerous. If anyone even lays a finger on me while I charge up my shot, then my insides turn to mush. However this proves that my body can hold the power of one for all for a limited period of time, provided I don't try to move too much while doing so. I even tried to meditate for a minute in that state, and while I felt undeniably weaker it ouch. Stupid boys, and recovery girls putting her cane back down on the ground while Izuku nursed his head. Do you know how risky that was? I do, which is why I've come to you, and said Izuku earnestly. The only way I can learn to control this power is if my body can become accustomed to it first, then I can learn to regulate and use it. But in order to do that I need to know how long my body can withstand it before it becomes too much. The recovery girl closed her eyes for a moment and sighed to herself. She seemed to think for a few moments before coming to a decision and speaking very well then. Starting tomorrow the school will start their exams which consist of 10 papers spread over a period of two weeks. The third week will be the beginning of the practical exams, which will mean that you need to achieve at least some control over your power by the end of the second week. So here's what we'll do. Toshinori. Yes, madam. You will bring Midori a sent to me by 9.30 am every morning, by then everyone should be answering their papers, but use the teacher's side entrance just to be sure. You will come straight here, sit on the ground in my presence, and start to meditate. We will increase your maximum meditation time by one minute every day, until I see your body start to show signs of strain from the power of one for all. I will heal you, you will rest for half an hour, and then try again for that exact same amount of time. I will heal you again, and then the two of you will need to make a speedy exit from the premises understood. Yes, madam. Have an early lunch, and either spend the rest of the day relaxing, doing mental training or doing light physical training, said recovery girl. That time is yours to spend, but just make sure you don't overdo it. I will check you every morning before you start meditating, and if I suspect that you've overworked yourself, then there will be no meditation on that day. Understood. Yes, madam. Good. We start right now. Hit the floor and start channeling your power Midoriya-san, I've already started the clock. Yes, madam. And with that little deal made, Izuku started taking the first steps towards mastering one for all. Recovery girl soon discovered that while his body could handle one for all for about a minute, by the time the second minute came around the sheer power that was flowing through his body would start to have a physical effect on him. By the time he hit the third minute his muscle fibers started to break and his bones started to crack. But it wasn't anything truly serious, and thanks to recovery girl's power his bones and muscles would be as good, as new, and better than they were before. And with that upper limit set his training began. If you could call sneaking into a high school and into its infirmary only to meditate for a few minutes before sneaking out, training. Izuku also realized one important fact, meditating was boring. Sure it was something that he usually did at the end of the day to reflect on the day's events and get his thoughts in order before he went to bed. But meditating simply for the sake of meditating was utterly boring. His evenings were much more productive as he spent them learning the basics of martial arts from All Might as well as learning the number one hero's personal fighting style. Originally Izuku had planned to ask All Might to help him get someone to teach him the basics of martial arts, but his master surprised him by not only his knowledge of martial arts, but several fighting styles, which should have not been surprising in retrospect, since All Might was the number one hero for a reason, and one for all was just a small part of that reason. Still the time in the US was not exactly unproductive. In the time between his two meditative periods, All Might and he had gotten a lot of work done. From making up his quirk. Blood charger. A quirk that allows its holder to supercharge anything that has their blood. 
The amount of power that a person can input into the item is directly proportional to the strength of the user's will and conviction. This also allowed for a good cover story, as anyone who had even heard about Midori Azuku before his exam knew that the boy was a crybaby and extremely passive, hence why his quirk didn't produce as explosive results as it currently did. They ask all night to help him with ideas for equipment for his hero suit, since he planned on leaving the actual design of the suit to his mom when he got the acceptance letter. He wouldn't let her actually make the suit this time around though, as the support company actually made sure that their costumes were made with ballistic weave and actual armor, not to mention the actual equipment that he would request such as incorporating his utility belt, adding tasers, capture tape, air guns, etc., equipment that he doubted his mother would even think of, let alone include. It was an investment though, since none of the materials would come cheap, it would be expected that the prospective hero would pay for the suit in installments, even if they didn't end up actually becoming a hero. In many ways it was like a student loan so to speak. There was also the chance that the company could outright deny his requests, though that would be unlikely, since the request would come from a UA student, not to mention with All Might's personal recommendation. And since the company he had in mind was All Might's and Night Eye's personal support company, discretion was assured. Is something on your mind Izuku? Asked the powerful voice of All Might. Nothing All Might stammered Izuku I was just thinking about the last two weeks. Indeed, you've made quite a bit of progress haven't you said All Might with a smile. I still have a long way to go. True, but you've come much further than I expected you to in such a short amount of time, replied the number one hero. I am proud of you, Izuku. Day 30. Five days before classes begin. It's been two weeks since I've been in the UA, and in that time I've trained and sparred with All Might quite a bit. I think I've learned a lot though it's hard to say, as the only thing I can compare myself to is the symbol of peace himself. Not the best person to use as a comparison since I'm quite literally a beginner. Hopefully I'll have a better idea of where I stand after the battle trial. That the principal today reminds me of that ancient cartoon character, what was his name Winnie the Pooh. Apparently he's one of the few who knows the whole truth of one for all. Since all the practical exams are done and almost all the staff are off campus taking a week's vacation doing patrols, we can use the training grounds to train well. And so with it the principal, recovery girl, All Might, and I went to Jim Gamma, more commonly known as the training kitchen land, and I must say that it was huge. You could easily fit two football stadiums inside this place and still have a bit of space left over. Once everyone was in place I began. Channeling the power of my quirk into my right hand, I tried to use 5% of my power to flick each of my four fingers and not my thumb for obvious reasons. Each flick caused massive shockwaves and each finger broke as a result. Recovery girl wanted to stop it right then and there, but All Might somehow managed to convince her to let me continue. Not sure if I should be grateful for that or not considering the sheer amount of pain I was in at that moment. Nevertheless I continued the flicks with my left hand. After the seventh broken finger All Might sighed before he took a step forward and walked directly in front of my hand. I can still hear his words as clearly as if he just said them. I trust you Izuku. And then it was time for the final flick, I concentrated the power of my quirk into my hand, picturing an egg not breaking in a microwave. I thought to myself 5% as the familiar red arcs of power spread across my hand. I took an All Might smiling visage and I could almost feel the trust and faith he had in me. The red arcs of power seemed to melt into my skin as my arm was now covered with a soft golden glow with arcs of emerald lightning dancing across it and flicked my finger, and miraculously it did not break, and while the wind was powerful enough to blow All Might's hair back, it wasn't enough to make him flinch, which was an extremely good thing. A31. Four days before classes begin. After yesterday's success, which was followed by a quick trip to La La Land courtesy of Recovery Girl's quirk, a new training schedule was made for me. I would spend the mornings training with All Might in martial arts, make my way to the UA in the evenings, take a gun that Nezu procured, and attempt to shoot 10 targets that were 30 meters in front of me. Then I would practice my flicks for a day. Honestly a target at 30 meters seemed like too much for a beginner, as the less said about my attempts to hit any of the targets the better. And, as for my training with my quirk. I managed to break 3 fingers instead of 7, which normally I would see as an improvement if it wasn't for what I was thinking of when I broke them. The Kugo. I took yesterday's lesson to heart, and this time I pictured a familiar visage before I flicked my finger. For my first flick I pictured All Might, I recalled my memory of yesterday, and saw my hand take on a golden glow, as it had yesterday. I then flicked my finger, releasing a powerful gust of wind, with my finger taking little to no damage. For my second flick I pictured the smiling visage of my mother, of the person that was there through everything, of the one who made me want to continue on with life, even when I felt like there was no point in doing so. 
that too released a powerful gust of wind with little to no damage on my finger. For my third flick another visage immediately came to mind, of a person who had just as much of an impact on my life, except in a much more negative way. Bakugo. My mind slipped, and the entire power of my quirk flowed through my finger, releasing a powerful shockwave, and shattering my index finger. I did the same thing again, all might, mom, Bakugo, shattered finger. And again, all might, Bakugo, shattered finger. I needed to get this under control, and fast, or else when I face him in combat, and I will face him in combat, I might just put him down for good. A32. Three days before classes begin. My training went just as well as it did yesterday, in fact it was a near replica, with the slight exception that I was not shooting at a distance of 15 meters, rather than 30 meters. But it wasn't my aim that was the problem, rather it was the fluctuations with my quirk, especially when a certain someone came to my mind. Tatsuki Bakugu, Kachin. I know him well, some might even say. And I've always tried to be with him. In a way I guess I wanted to be him. Kachin was once my idol, my hero, just, as All Might is. He was something to aim to be, at least that's what I once thought. I know him, almost, as well as he knows himself, and I understand that within him is a good heart, as well as a drive to be a hero, as well as to be the best. Bakugo has a heroic spirit, in a way that is far different from my own, yet it is still there. A month ago I would have been perfectly fine with who he was, a month ago he would have still been my Kachin. But a lot can change in a month, and I can now see things in a far different light. And though I know better that most just the kind of person that Bakugu is underneath, it simply doesn't matter because. It is not who you are underneath, but rather it is what you do that defines you. I couldn't run from the fact that he was the one who made my life a living hell. Who made sure that I absolutely did not belong anywhere, no matter what I did. He was also the one that told me to go and throw myself off a building, effectively committing suicide. He was no longer my hero, rather he was my demon, one which I need to overcome if I ever want to get closure, as well as control over my power. Why Kachin? Why? A33. Two days before classes begin. There is nothing I can do about my issues with Bakugu, at least for now, so I decided to move on to the next phase of my training, and that would be full cowl. The risks with this ability being that without full control over my quirk, I could potentially kill myself, hence why I won't be using it, unless I have absolutely no other choice, or until I can let go of my demons, and thus achieve control of my quirk. Still I began my quirk training today with full on sparring against all might. Full cowl is intoxicating, there simply is no other way to put it. Just the sheer power that I could feel under my skin, humming in anticipation to be used was like nothing I had ever felt before. I didn't even have an experience I could compare it to. Still I knew two things though. The first was that I would master this power, no matter how long it took or how much it would demand of me, I would master it and use it to save lives and protect the peace. The second thing was that I was right to be worried. During the third minute of my spar my power started to fluctuate for lack of a better word. All Might took advantage of my momentary distraction to launch a punch straight through my guard and right at my jaw. I panicked and for some weird reason my mind went to the one guy who I desperately didn't want to think about. The one guy who had done this to me so many times before. My counter-attack sent All Might flying back, an amazing achievement for a prospective hero who hasn't even started his course. It also had the added effect of shattering my bones and making my arm look like I shoved it into a meat grinder. Before Recovery Girl could heal me and send me into La La Land, the principal insisted I finish my aim training. I managed to hit a bullseye today, a single bullseye, through sheer dumb luck. The day would be my last day training in the UA before term began, the teachers would be returning back tomorrow, and I could not be seen. A34. One day before classes begin. This will be my last entry in this training log. I plan on shifting to a new log to record my days at UA incidentally, despite this being a training log, there isn't any training of note to record, as All Might insisted I have this day to myself for a little R and R. That being said though, Small Might, All Might actually laughed when he heard my nickname for his sunken form, and I did spend the morning together at the Gaba Beach. Our relationship wasn't that of teacher and student, rather that of the ancient relationship between a master and his apprentice. But more than that All Might is the reason that I am what I am, no matter how you look at it, there is no doubting that, and more than succeeding, more than becoming a hero, I want to make him proud of me, him, and mom. Mom? I came home today for lunch, the first time in a long time now that I think about it. I spent the whole day with her, just enjoying her company for the entirety of the evening. It's been a long time since I've done something like this, and knowing what my life at UA would be like, it would be a long time before I would get the chance to do so again. Mom, I doubt that you will ever read this, but on the slim chance that you do I love you mom, more than anything, and thank you for everything that you've done for me. Izuku couldn't help but gape as he walked along the corridors of UA.
though he'd been coming here for the past month, that was more of a sneak in, train, and sneak out situation, and he'd never really gotten the chance to actually take in its aesthetic appeal. UA had a less than 0.2% acceptance rate. Every year over 300 students applied for its hero course, out of which only 40 students elected, 4 through recommendation, and 36 through the entrance exam. As a result, saying that very few people cared about the school's aesthetics when they put in their application would be an overestimation, which made just simply walking through these corridors the cherry on top of the cake that was saying you got into UA. Whoever designed this place was truly an architectural mastermind. Izuku came to a stop in front of the truly massive door to class 1A seriously, why was this thing so massive? Izuku knew that he was a bit small when compared to his age group, but this door was at least five times his height. Shaking his head a bit Izuku opened the door. Remove your foot from that desk. Said a bespectacled boy. Such an action is insulting to those who came to the UA before us, as well as the craftsmen who made this desk. Like I care yelled Bakugu what middle school are you from? My name is Tenya Iida, and he replied I'm from Samei Private Academy. Samei? Bellowed Bakugu, a stuck-up elitist then. I should blow you up to bits. You're awful. Do you really wish to become a hero? Bakugo wishes to be the best. Make no mistake about that. Said Izuku, bringing the entire class's attention to him. To him, being a hero is being the most powerful warrior on the block, someone whose very name strikes fear into the hearts of villains. You on the other hand are different. Tenya Iida, if I am not mistaken, from the Ida family line. If you're anything like Ingenium then to you being a hero means to inspire hope, to help those in need, to rescue people from the hardships of today, and give them hope for a better tomorrow. Neither belief is necessarily bad, nor are they necessarily incompatible, as All Might represents both philosophies to a T. By now the entire class was staring at him, which was not that surprising, as he'd taken what seemed to be the dialogue between an uptight prick and an arrogant hothead, and turned it into a discussion on their philosophies, beliefs, and ideals, as heroes. The best example I would give here would be that Bakugo's beliefs are quite similar to Endeavor, while Lida Sense are closer to best genist finished Izuku, but I am being rude. Good morning everyone, I am Izuku Midoriya, and I will be your classmate for the next three years. Some of Izuku's new classmates raised their hands in greeting, while others simply nodded in acknowledgement, but by far the most pronounced reaction was from the two people he'd interrupted. Bakugo had his feet off the table, and his hands were clenched tighter than Izuku thought was humanly possible. He was looking at Izuku with a glare so fierce that if looks could kill well, you know how the saying goes. Then Yaida on the other hand walked straight towards the new arrival, he'd recognized Izuku from the exam, as the boy he swore he would apologize to, and he was going to keep his word. Midoriya san, I am Tenya Ida. I'm from Samei Private Academy. The bespectacled boy held out his hand which Izuku took and shook. You perceived the true nature of that practical exam while I did not. I am sorry to say that I misjudged you. You were the superior candidate. I did not perceive anything. Ida said Midoriya. All of you were too stunned to react, and that girl was in actual danger. I bought time for you all to move on, and I saved her life, just as she saved mine. Even if I was rejected because of my actions I would have left with my head held high. Izuku looked Ida straight in the eye, and spoke, slowly and clearly. As heroes we exist to save lives, and help those who cannot help themselves. No matter whether our ideals lead to us inspiring fear in villains, or hope in civilians, no matter what we specialize in, be that rescuing, combat, protection, support, no matter our goals, such as making a legacy, becoming the strongest, money, revenge, whatever. We exist to save lives, that is what heroes do, above all else. Did Oria send your insight into heroes, and their ideologies is truly inspiring. Ida I am now firmly convinced that you are a much superior candidate than I, I swear that I will take your words today to heart. Please do Ida, for all our sakes. Hey I know that hair said a voice from behind him, breaking Izuku out of his thoughts, falling boy. Gravity Gal said to Izuku, as he turned around to greet his new classmate wow, you look really cute in that uniform. Thank you replied the blushing brunette who was completely blindsided by the compliment. I'm Izuku Midoriya, the green haired boy. And this here is Tenya Iida, and you are. Achako Yurahara, but please call me Achako, she replied, getting more comfortable, as the conversation came back to familiar waters. So we've got our entrance ceremony and guidance counseling today right? Wonder what our teacher will be like, boy I'm nervous. Well if you really want to know then take a look and see for yourself, he's right behind you. Ida's eyes quickly scanned the area behind his new acquaintance for signs of their homeroom teacher, and Achako spun around so fast that Izuku thought for a split second that she might give herself whiplash. 
if you're here to socialize then get out came the voice of the aforementioned teacher from the ground, causing both the brunette girl and the bespectacled boy to do a double take as their eyes darted down to look at a scruffy looking man in a sleeping bag of all things, just a foot away from the door, this is the hero course. Somehow the sleeping bag man managed to raise himself off the ground and into a standing position, all while still being fully enclosed in the sleeping bag somehow. It took all of you a good 8 seconds to quiet down. Time is a precious resource you know, you need to learn to use every second of it. Said the sleeping bag man. My name is Shouda Azawa, and I'll be your homeroom teacher. Now quickly change into your gym clothes and head out to the grounds. Now. Good, you're all here said 1A's homeroom teacher to the assembled students, we'll be conducting a basic test of your quirks. But what about the opening ceremony and the guidance sessions? Asked Ichako, interrupting the pro hero. You all are pro heroes in training, you have no time for that. Said Azawa sharply UA is known for our freestyle education system that applies to us teachers as well. Now we'll be doing your basic gym tests, softball throwing, 50 meters dash, grip strength, standing long jump, side to side stepping, and the endurance run. The caveat here is that this time there are no quirk restrictions. The Kugo, how far could you throw in middle school? 67 meters. Great, now get in that circle and throw this ball said Azawa, tossing the spiky blonde haired Tina softball. Use your quirk, do whatever you have to do to get the best result, just do not leave that circle. The Kugo gave a single nod of acknowledgement before leaning into a standard pitching pose, before throwing the ball, and near simultaneously releasing a massive explosion from the palm of his hand. And with the sound reminiscent of a gunshot, the ball went flying into the air, far past what the eye could normally see. 705.2 meters, a good throw, said Azawa. It is important for us to know your limits, which is the first step to figuring out what kind of hero you will be. That being said though, UA only trains the best of the best, so I will tell you this right here, and now, I will be expelling any who I feel do not have what it takes to become a hero, furthermore, unless all of your performances are exceptional, the person with the lowest score will be judged as hopeless and will be immediately expelled. Your faith is in your hands, now line up in your seat order. We'll be doing the events in the order I just listed them in. This is slightly different, muttered Izuku to himself, as he watched his classmates all throw a softball, one after another, with varying degrees of success. As the 19th seed of class 1A, he was the third last student to get the chance to throw the ball, and so he knew just how high he'd need to score to pass, though he shook the feeling that something was off here. Next. Izuku shook his head, as he moved onto the throwing platform, he knew he couldn't score first place in this event, Achako had managed to get the Infinitison to pop up after all, but he could hopefully score high enough to get a good standing with his classmates and his homeroom teacher. Izuku concentrated the power of one for all in his hand and flung the ball. 49 meters. What on earth? Izuku knew he channeled the power of one for all, he felt the power, as it settled into his hand, he heard the barely audible crackle of his bioelectricity, as it flowed across his arm, barely visible to the naked eye. There was no way, absolutely no way, that the softball had traveled less than a hundred meters, much less barely half that amount. I erased your quirk. Said Izawa, as he walked towards the green-haired boy I watched your entrance exam, and honestly, it was completely irrational the way you got in. I saw how you were completely incapacitated when you used your quirk, and while I will admit that you found a clever way around it, it won't help you here. So tell me, are you hoping that someone will step in to help you after you use? Are you sure about that Eraser Head Sensei? Asked Midoriya, cutting off his homeroom teacher, whose eyebrows were raised at the fact that Izuku had correctly guessed his pro hero identity, barely a few seconds after he'd used his quirk. Out of all the people in this school you were the last person I would think would make assumptions. But if you're so sure, would you like to make a bet? Oh? Give us all a chance said Izuku quietly, his voice clear enough that Izawa who was quite near him to hear, but soft enough that his classmates, save Jiro, would have no idea what he asked for, if I pass this little test and walk away on my own power, would you consider keeping all of us on the roster? Score within the top 5, and I'll be willing to consider it, said Izawa, don't, and you can consider yourself hopeless. You have your quirk back. Give this another go, and let's get this over with. Izuku nodded and collected the ball before resuming his place inside the circle. One for all. Five percent he thought to himself, as he felt those red lines of power streak across his entire arm, before they settled down, infusing his muscle fibers and bones with power, as his skin took on a slight golden glow, that was all, but invisible under the burning sun. Mom Izuku muttered, as the image of the smiling form of Inko Midori appeared in his head. He could feel her love as she stood with him through his childhood, her joy when she found out that her son would be going to, and the faith she had in his future when he left their apartment this morning one for all 
The glow around his fist increased, as green streaks of bioelectricity started to appear and trail across his entire arm. Izuku brought both his hands up till they were parallel to his head before executing a textbook pitcher's throw. The ball flew into the air, far past what the eye could see. Deep 690 meters said Izawa, not the best we've seen today, but good enough. Im impossible, quirks never manifest past the age of four, muttered Bakugo in pure shock. Izuku was nothing. He should have been nothing, but a pebble on the side of the road, not an actual threat. Bakugo remembered when the results came out for the entrance exam, and he'd been utterly shell-shocked when he'd been beaten by Deku by defenseless Izuku, of all people. Bakugo had intended to confront the loser when he came to school, to find out how on earth he cheated himself into being in the first place. How that bloody pebble had stolen what should have been rightfully this. But he never showed up. Izuku simply seemed to disappear entirely off the radar after the UA entrance exam. Bakugo had heard through the grapevine that Izuku had privately met and spoken with their middle school teachers, which while highly unusual wasn't illegal, before he'd withdrawn himself so that he could supposed lipripper for UA. But this, whatever Bakugo had been expecting, certainly hadn't been it. Has Deku been lying all these years? How on earth did that pathetic loser have the guts to lie to him? Him who the hell did he think he was? Bakugo's entire thought process took little less than a minute, and in that time his shock nearly had turned into a towering inferno of rage. What the hell was that? Explain yourself Deku. Bakugo blasted himself forward to get close to his former friend, who he'd long since discarded due to his uselessness. Deku's body automatically shifted into a defensive position with his right hand ready for a counter-attack, a right hand that seemed to be nearly immediately enveloped by those red lines of power that constituted 100% of one for all's power. Enough said Izawa, his hair sticking straight up, as his eyes glowed red. His giant white bandages that were usually loosely wrapped around his shoulders and head were now quite firmly wrapped around Bakugo who was struggling to move, as the pro hero glared at both him and Izuku stopped struggling, this is a capture weapon made of carbon fibers and a special alloy wire. You're not breaking out of it. Now stop using your quirk already. I'm getting dry eyes over here. Bakugo growled before he forced himself to relax, and Izawa yanked him back towards the group of students. Pull a stunt like that again, and you're out Bakugo. Said Izawa sternly, glaring at him for good measure with his red eyes before he let his quirk fade, and his hair fell down to cover his face Jeez, what a waste of time, prepare for the next event. We'll be moving in the same order as the previous event, Bakugo you'll be going first, followed by the rest in seat order. Right said everyone, and, as Yeoi Rozu grabbed a softball and moved to the throwing circle, while Bakugo, Aoma, Ashido, Asui, and Ida took their positions on the race track that was just beside the throwing circle. The Aoi Rozu turn was definitely the most unique, as she used her quirk to make actual miniature cannon, much to the utter astonishment of her class, she then seemed to create a metal sphere out of her hand, which she stuffed the softball into, loaded in the cannon, and fired. 10,981 meters precisely, and while I don't think we can classify that as a throw, you did do what you needed to get the best results, so I guess it counts. Said as I will write you 5, get ready, 3, 2, 1, go. Past was the only thing that Izuku could say as he watched the first 50 meter dash. Ida, easily the first to cross the finish line within 3 seconds flat, followed by Bakugo, who used his quirk to blast himself forward, crossing the finishing line at a little over 4 seconds, but the others were not far behind him, with Ashido finishing the dash in 5.28 seconds. Followed by Aoma in 5.51 seconds with Asui just behind him, finishing at 5.58 seconds. That group was the fastest of all the groups that had raced though, as Izuku made his way to the starting line he couldn't help but feel that his group would give them a run for their money, considering that his group contained both Todoroki and Yayoi Rozu. Ready? One for all. Full cowl. Said Izuku, as he tried to channel 5% of All Might's power through his body. 3. The image of the symbol of peace popped into his mind, his powerful presence that just makes you believe that everything's possible. 2. The image changed, and this time it was Small Might cheering him on, as he did his level best to clear up Dagaba Beach, the faith that the man had in him even then was truly amazing, but more than that it was something he swore he would live up to. 1. The image shifted, and this time it was the sheer pride that All Might had on his face when he congratulated him on getting into UA, the sheer smile on that face was infectious. Go. Three things happened at once. The ground under Todoroki's feet was frozen solid in an instant, as a pillar of ice shot out from beneath his legs, pushing him blindingly fast towards the finish line. Yayoi Rozu's feet glowed, as she nearly instantly created what could only be described as a pair of jet boots, which shot her forward towards the finish line. 
Emerald streaks of bioelectricity had started to crackle around Izuku's body, the moment he'd started to channel the quirk, and the moment, as Awa said go, he shot forward without any flare of the two recommended students, but just, as fast all the same. Though even though his sheer speed wasn't enough to beat either Todoroki, 331 seconds, or Yayoi Rozu, 407 seconds, he managed to clock in an amazing record of 438 seconds. If only Mineta, 10.5 seconds or Hagakur, 7.24 seconds, had been a bit faster, then they would have been the fastest group, but oh well. The third event was grip strength, and while Izuku was nowhere near Shoji amazing strength of 540 kilograms, he had managed to use 5% of his quirk to give himself a respectable figure of 115 kilograms, which was just a bit more than double of Bakugo's grip strength of 57 kilograms, much to the blonde's fury. The standing long jump had the most surprising results, at least in Izuku's minds, in order of placements the people with the longest jumps were Bakugou, who could practically sustain himself in mid-air for the length of an entire city block, Todoroki, Yeoi Rozu, using the same boot she'd used for the 50-meter dash, Siro, Echako, who first jumped them made herself float for, as long as she could stand it, Aoma, Ida, Asui, Sato, and then him. Honestly Izuku was surprised that he was so far behind when he was sure that he would have succeeded in this event out of them all, but on reflection, it did make sense. First place in the side-to-side -side stepping was amazingly enough taken by Mineta of all people, as the sticky ball user who used cis balls to create two small walls on either side of him. He nodded at Izawa when he was ready to begin. Izawa started the stopwatch, and Mineta practically flung himself into one of the walls, which acted like a springboard, launching him towards the other wall, which shot him right back into the first wall. The sticky ball user was moving so fast that he was leaving actual afterimages of himself. Izuku managed to snag second place for himself, much to Bakugo's immense fury, but thankfully one glare from Izawa was enough to dissuade the blonde from doing anything stupid. And then came the endurance run in which Ida once again scored first place, and was quickly followed by Todoroki and Yeoi Rozu, who were neck and neck through their groups the whole race, with the latter just barely beating out the former at the last stretch. Bakugo managed to snag himself 4th place, while Izuku just managed to get himself 5th. Your overall positions are the average of each position you got across each competition. Azawi Aoirozu, Todoroki, Bakugo, Midoriya Aida. Congratulations on being in the top 5 students. That being said, Jiro, Kaminari, Hagakur, and Mineta, your performances are below the expected performances of UA students who would do these exercises without their quirks, I should know since I make sure that there is no cheating going on when they do these yearly PE tests. That being said though, I was lying about expelling someone. That was a rational deception meant to bring out the best in all of you. What? Well of course it was a lie. Said Yeoi Rozu didn't take much to figure that. Shouta Azawa interrupted Izuku, his clear, even voice that somehow seemed to be laced with power, drew everyone's attention to its source codename. Eraserhead. An angular type hero whose fighting technique is truly exceptional. The master of both Hoho Jutsu and Bujinkan Ninjutsu, his preferred method of combat is to erase his opponent's quirk, bind them, and knock them out before moving on to the next target. He detests the press and makes sure to have as limited of a media presence as possible, while at the same time he makes sure to be well aware of any possible opponents and quirks he may have to engage in combat. His levels of analysis and deduction are also rumored to be exceptional. Rumor also has it that he is solely responsible for almost a hundred expulsions in the UA Hero course during his short tenure here, as a teacher, not one of which has ever been overruled. Am I right, Sensei? You are well informed Midoriya, and just for the record it is well over a hundred expulsions said Izawa, much to the utter shock of the class, and especially Aoi Rozu who was completely shell-shocked at how wrong she'd been. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles, said Izuku. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory gained you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. Sun Tzu said to Izawa, but with enough idle chatter, make your way back to the class and prepare yourselves for your first lesson. Also Mineta. Yes, the sticky ball user was practically trembling under Eraserhead's quirk-enhanced glare. Despite scoring the first rank in the side-to-side -side stepping test, you still manage to be the lowest rank student due to your abysmal results in all the other tests, and I have already begun to consider the possibility of your expulsion. You have until the sports festival to change my mind, so I suggest you put in the physical training every day, or else you might just find yourself shifted to gen ed. Every single set of eyes in class won a shot straight to the door when they heard that voice, a voice that was so magnetic, and that contained a hint of such incredible power, that it could only come from one person, and there was no doubt in anyone's mind on who that person was. Humming through the door like a normal person. Izuku couldn't help but face palm at his idol and mentor's ridiculous entrance. 
And yet despite his embarrassment he was still grinning like a loon under his palm. All Might was a force of nature, and not just because of his quirk. His sheer presence was enough to fill both his allies and nearby civilians with hope, and his sheer natural charisma made him so likeable, and more importantly approachable, despite being the number one hero in the world. And Izuku could clearly see, though he doubted that any of his classmates noticed, that with that one, over-the-top entrance, All Might had simultaneously managed to drain any apprehension about about being trained by the number one hero, while at the same time, endearing himself to the majority of the class. Hero basic training said All Might this is the class that will put you through the ringer, in order to mold you all into heroes. This is the class that I will be in charge of, though unlike your other subjects do expect the other pros to be taking this class from time to time, as they teach you about not just the different types of hero work they each specialize in. But also their preferred modus operandi, and the pros and cons of each approach. All Might took a moment to look at his students, all 20 of them. That being said, each individual hero is unique in their own way. Your ability comes from a mix of your training, personality, physical power, and your quirk, and how well you can use it, and, as such no two heroes will truly ever be the same. Indeed even twins who have the same exact quirk and physical powers may fight in completely different ways, and there is absolutely nothing wrong with that. All Might's eyes were looking straight at Izuku when he said that line, and the messy green-haired boy got the message loud and clear. You may have my quirk, but you are not me. You are you, and that is all you will ever have to be. However in order to decide on how to best train you, I need to know what you can do. Continued All Might head down to the locker room and change into your costumes, they've already been placed in your lockers, and both your lockers and your cases have been marked with your seat numbers, so there should be no confusion, after that make your way to ground beta. Yes, sensei. Thank you, your costume is so practical looking sad Ichako I wish I'd been more specific on my request form, this suit so puffy and curvy that it's embarrassing. Doesn't change the fact that it makes you look really cute and pretty, Izuku replied, instantly causing the zero-gravity user to resemble a steam engine. Sensei, this appears to be the same field we used for the entrance exam, will we once again be performing cityscape maneuvers? No, instead you'll be doing step 2 Ida, and that is indoor anti-personal battle training said All Might you see, while well, most villain battles are broadcasted to be happening outdoors, statistically speaking those villains who actually have any idea about what they're doing, would try and ensure that any conflict happens indoors. Can anyone give me some examples of conflict likely to occur indoors? Confinements, house arrests, black market deals, etc. said Izuku. Exactly. Said All Might now everyone will be put into teams of two, and you face off indoors, with one team taking the role of villains, and the other taking the role of heroes. In this scenario the villains have hidden a nuclear bomb inside this facility, and the heroes have to go inside and take care of it. Each battle will last for 20 minutes max. Heroes win if they capture the villains or touch the weapon. Villains win if they take out the heroes or the time limit runs up. Any questions? Almost half the class burst into questions, and All Might answered them all, ranging from questions about the rules put forth from Yeoi Rozu, to assuring Ichiko that he wasn't threatening to expel them like Izawa, to cautioning Bakugu about liberal use of force, while saying that it was allowed, to saying that yes, Aoma's cape did look cool. Aida, what was your question? How will be forming Team Sensei? Simple, you will all draw lots, and then I will choose which team fights which. As I have little idea of the extent of all your respective abilities and capabilities, this will truly be a matter of chance. Are you sure that's wise sensei? Asked Ida. It does make sense when you think about it, Yaoi Orzu pros often have to team up with other agencies on the spot during emergencies, it would be uncommon, but not unheard of for pro heroes to have never even heard of, much less met each other before said emergency. Not to mention that heroes can be well outside their usual area of activity when an emergency happens, at Izuku for example, Mufasu is the home of Endeavor's hero agency, however during the recent villain it was All Might who saved the helpless civilian from the sludge monster. Izuku barely managed to stop himself from grinning when he heard his childhood friend's fists clench and teeth grind from that jab. Hero agencies also move around quite often, and with All Might's addition to the UA hero team, as well as Kamui Wood's newly secured position, there was no need for my father to remain here, so the Endeavor hero agency has shifted its main base of operation to Tokyo. Exactly said All Might, his gaze resting on Izuku for a moment before it shifted to the class, as a whole. Now step up and pick your lots. Midoriya decided to make small talk with his teammate as they made their way into the building. Out of all the people in class 1A, Shoji was the one he knew the least about, not only that, but that his quirk was one of the more unknown and well quirky quirks of their class. Still while his teammate might have been a bit of a surprise, his opponents, or rather one of his opponents was not. 
Izuku had told All Might the reason behind his inability to produce consistent results with his quirk, he told him that win or lose, he needed to face his demon, if he had any chance of moving on, he had asked All Might for this pairing, a day before school began, and now, on the first day of hero training, All Might was adhering to his request. The first match of the day would be the villain team of Izuku and Shoji versus Kirishima and Bakugou. As the villains they had to either disable their opponents or survive for 30 minutes, however prolonging the match wasn't an option when one was up against Bakugo. Izuku knew that he had to face his childhood friend, but he also knew that he had to win. In such a scenario it seemed the best bet was to divide and conquer, but that could backfire, as well, if he fell, then there was no doubt that Shoji would fall against Bakugo's raw destructive power, not to mention that if Kirishima was up then Bakugo could essentially bypass Shoji to win. The only logical solution would be to ensure that the weapon was secure before they engaged their respective opponents, and Izuku needed to face Bakugou without either Kirishima or Shoji interfering, which meant that they couldn't fight together. They wouldn't engage their opponents at the same time, which meant that Izuku now had a plan. Bang. A pure shockwave of energy crashed across the entirety of the second floor of the building, blowing the hero team away from their opponent. Fucking hell what the heck was that? screamed Bakugo, as he glared at the dust cloud created by whatever the heck had just hit him, and wondered for a moment if this was some kind of an ability that the masked man could use before his blood started to boil, as he heard a very familiar voice. Hiroshima, this fight is between Kachin and Ayazuku's voice seemed to echo from all around them. Move forward and face your own opponent. Beku? Bakugo yelled as he blasted himself forward, but was almost immediately blasted back by another shockwave that this time blew away not only Bakugo, but all the dust and debris, the first shockwave generated to reveal Izuku Midoriya. Dressed in a dark green full-body jumpsuit with beige gloves, a red utility belt, red boots, black elbow pads, and knee pads that extended to his legs and reached up to his thighs, Izuku didn't look like much. Even with a diamond-shaped metal respirator attached to his face that made him look slightly intimidating, Izuku's costume really didn't stand out all that much. In fact compared to the rest of the class, he almost looked down the right plane. However, as he stood right beside the staircase leading up to the third floor with what seemed to be a glossy black short-barrel shotgun pointed straight at them, Kirishima could honestly say that he hadn't felt this intimidated since his eighth grade, where he'd seen his friends accosted by an actual terrifying villain. Izuku almost casually lowered the shotgun till it was facing the floor and then pulled the trigger, once more creating a cloud of debris and quite a large hole in the floor. Follow me if you have the guts to face me Kachin. Said Deku before he leaped down. Deku? Roared Bakugu as he leaped to give chase. Alright Izuku this is it the messy green haired boy said to himself as he ran around a corner your demon is after you, now all you have to do is face him. Deku yelled at Bakugou as he ran straight past the corner that Izuku hid behind, causing the green-haired boy to take a deep breath before emerging from his corner. Bakugou yelled, causing the blonde-haired hothead to come to a complete dead stop. I am no longer your defenseless Izuku. I am no longer your worthless punching bag. From now on Deku is the name of a hero. You always sprout that crap even when you're scared out of your fucking mind. Said Bakugo it pisses me off. The explosion quirk user blasted himself backwards, while almost simultaneously twisting himself in mid-air, so that he was facing Izuku, as he headed straight for the ninth wielder of one for all. For his part Izuku was already bringing his hands up to his left and moving to his right to intercept Bakugo's right hook, and... Bang! The sound of Bakugo's body hitting the floor as Izuku threw him over his shoulder echoed through the hall. The messy green-haired boy wasn't done, as he jumped up, as high, as he could without his quirk bringing his knees, as close to his chest, as he could in a second before pushing them straight down onto Bakugo's stomach, or rather where Bakugo's stomach should have been. As despite being stunned by the flip he just experienced, Bakugo was still aware enough to see Deku's feet fly above his face, and that awareness was all he needed to know that he needed to make the biggest explosion he could in the second he had to work with, and that was exactly what he did, blasting himself away just in the nick of time, from what would have undoubtedly been a painful blow, before quickly making his way back to his feet, only to find that Deku had already closed the distance between them. Ghoul yelled at Bakugu, as he blasted himself forward at Deku, lashing out with his left leg. However instead of hitting Deku in the face like he expected his leg hit a very strong arm that stood firm despite the power and momentum of the kick, and Deku lashed out with his left hand which Bakugo barely managed to catch with his right. Bang! Deku couldn't help but scream, as he felt like a firecracker had just gone off in his hand, which was quite an apt description, considering that Bakugo had just unleashed a medium-sized explosion from his hand. But unfortunately for the blonde-haired hothead, that wasn't enough to put down Izuku, as he lashed out with a solid kick to Bakugo's chest, pushing the blonde quite a fair bit of distance away. 
Meanwhile in the control room, Class 1A could only stare at the battle that was unfolding between the two top scorers of the entrance exam. He's amazing, said Sato, as he watched Izuku fight against Bakugu. He's able to go up against that guy without using his quirk at all. The rest of his class could only nod at those words, while rescue points could be arbitrarily given by the examiners during the entrance exam, combat points had a fixed value, and that were earned by beating the robots, and Bakugo had earned the second place in the entrance, solely due to his combat points. And yet despite this. Yeah, but it's costing him though, said Jiro, as she and the rest of the class stared at Izuku's blackened hand. Is that the best you could do Kachin? Izuku taunted me because I felt more pain due to training accidents than I did during that so-called attack. That was a statement that was utterly true, as Izuku had broken all his fingers, as well as torn his hands to shreds, as he tried to learn how to use one for all. I was going to go easy on you Deku said Bakugo with an almost maniac-like grin. But if you're so eager for pain then let me grant you your wish. Izuku tightened his guard, alert for the attack that he was sure was going to come any second now, but to his utter befuddlement Bakugou dropped his stance and even straightened up a bit. I'm guessing you know this from your stalking, but the sweat glands on my palm secrete something akin to nitroglycerin said Bakugo as he raised his hands, his right gauntlet pointed straight at Izuku with his left hand fingering the gauntlet's pin, assuming they honored my request, these gauntlets have been storing that fluid since the moment I put them on. Bakugo stop it yelled All Might in the control room, the mic transferring the sound to Bakugo's earphone. Are you trying to kill him? He won't die if he dodges. Yelled Bakugo in response, as he pulled a pin that would have unleashed an explosion that could potentially take out a small house, or rather it would have if Izuku hadn't pulled out a black pistol, powering up, as he did so, and pulling the trigger. Unlike his airsoft shotgun that was clipped to the left-hand side of his belt, which fired large wide area blasts, Izuku's BB pistol fired a small, but extremely accurate ball bearing at his target, if Izuku was given time to power up to his maximum, then the bullet could potentially pierce through several buildings, without destroying anything surrounding the target. In other words the perfect weapon to use for precision attacks such as a gun held to a hostage's head, or a weapon aimed at him, like the Kugo's gauntlet. Run said Izuku in a nearly emotionless monotone, as unclipped his shotgun and aimed it straight at Bakugou. I'm running. Bang. All right, think Kirishima. The redeed said to himself as he looked at the hole that Izuku had made. The green-haired boy had been standing just at the tip of the staircase before he made that hole in the floor. The staircase was at the end of a narrow corridor and there was no other way to get to it other than to jump and Kirishima was aware of just how far he could jump and the hole was a bit bigger than that. If one were to think logically Bakugou should have been the one to go forward, as he could use his quirk to fly, well Kirishima should have chazzed after Midoriya, but the hothead had been driven into a rage after just a few taunts, and had chazzed after the green-haired boy with reckless abandon, which was likely Izuku's plan from the get-go. Think damn it, if only I had some way to reduce the, and just like that the light bulb went off in the Ritid's head, as he ran back to the other end of the corridor, tore off a door from its hinges, and quickly ran back to the hole. He had originally discarded the thought of using the door, as it wasn't as big as the hole, but he realized that he didn't need to make a bridge to cross, he just needed to reduce the gap. Reaching back to the door, Kirishima hardened his hands and slammed them through the wall until he made a square-sized hole and then brought the concrete block and placed it on one end of the door. He then made another large concrete block and placed it over the first before pushing the thing forward, before talking a few steps back to admire his handiwork. All right, here we go said Kirishima with a wide grin as he started running towards the hole, leaped over the concrete blocks, used the door as a springboard, and jumped as far as he could. All right. He yelled as he grabbed the railing of the stairs with his hand, just as his feet touched and slipped of the step, with as much strength as he could muster, he pulled himself up onto the stairs before he started to make his way up to face his opponent and win this whole thing. Hucking Halbakugo, as he tried to pull himself out of the rubble of a wall he destroyed with his back, the second wall to be precise, as just in front of him was another wall with a nice Bakugo-shaped hole in it, what the heck was that? That was your little old punching. Bang. The moment he heard Deku's voice he threw his left arm, the one which still had a gauntlet, forward, and threw the pin. He'd given Deku too much time to respond during the first attack, there was no way he was going to make the same mistake. Despite the sound of the huge explosion he'd just released, Bakugou could clearly hear the voice of his old friend, as if it was right beside him, because to his utter disbelief it was. His head had immediately snapped to his right the moment he'd heard that gasp of pain, and to his utter shock, he saw Izuku there, rubbing his left shoulder, as if he'd just slammed it against a wall, his left hand loosely catching the weapon that had just blown him through two walls. Bakugo didn't waste a second. 
despite his mind still being unable to process the fact that Izuku had just dodged that blast and got in close in the span of a second, much less the fact that it was Deku that was pushing him so far. Bakugo's body acted on instinct as it slammed him with a right elbow, pushing the one for all user just back enough to be slammed with the shin of Bakugo's left foot and straight into the wall. Izuku wasn't idle however, while his hands were to too slow to block the oncoming blow, they were fast enough to catch the leg, which he used to fling Bakugo a full 180 degrees and slam him against the wall and almost putting him through it before following it up with a kick of his own. At this point Bakugo wasn't able to think straight, but he was still quite able to fight as he blocked Izuku's oncoming kick before he used that leg to pull the boy closer, grabbing his shoulders and then slamming his knee into Izuku's gut, not once, but three times before he let go, before his used his legs to push the messy green-haired kind back before bringing his hands forward. And pushing all the power and energy he had left into one last massive explosion. Bang. Bakugo was down on his knees, panting heavily, his arms twitching due to the complete overuse of his quirk. A second later his eyes widened as the adrenaline faded from his system and his consciousness freed itself from the battle lust that had briefly overtaken his system. Deku Deku. Bakugo yelled, not in anger or rage, as he usually did when he yelled that name, but rather in sheer emotional terror, the terror that he now had his old friend's blood on his hands. Bakugo had been in a state of desperation and confusion in that last bout, desperation to win the fight and confusion that it was Deku who'd pushed him this far. Mixing desperation, confusion, adrenaline, and a sprinkle of fear would lead to doing things that Bakugo would never otherwise do, such as putting all his power into one massive blast that not only took out the entire corner of this building, but nearly half the adjacent one as well. And he'd shot that blast at nearly point-blank range. Deku. And with that last shout exhaustion, both physical and mental, hit him like a ton of bricks and he passed out. Hiroshima was in a bad place, Shoji was just as strong, if not stronger than he was with his quirk activated, and Shoji's quirk gave him range to work with, while Kirishima's did not, combine that with the narrow corridors of this building, meant that he could not in any way flank his opponent. That was something that Kirishima didn't mind, as back attacks and sneak attacks were unmanly, but right now he needed something to get past this thing. If only he could create some kind of distraction. Bang. The building shook, and just for a moment Shoji lost both his concentration and his balance, but a moment was all Kirishima needed. He used every single ounce of strength to push through all of Shoji's extended arms, get close to him, and deliver a massive uppercut right to Shoji's jaw, knocking the team down to the ground. Not wasting a moment he quickly removed his capture tape and looped it around Shoji's head and one of his arms. Young Shoji has been captured. Please do not make any moves now young Shoji, you're out of bounds, said All Might's voice through the general broadcast. Understandably, Shoji replied nice job Kirishima, now go on, you still have the bomb to find. The thankful man replied to the redeed happily, as he started to make his way to the stairs, not noticing Shoji grin under his mask. One for all was a very unique quirk, in addition to being able to accumulate and store the power of its wielder before being passed on to the next, thereby ensuring that each generation was greater than its predecessor. It had three distinctive traits that made its effects far different than any other enhancer quirk. The first was that the power of the quirk could be used to enhance everything, not just strength, speed and durability, but perception, intelligence, etc. This was why whereas the rest of the class started panicking when they witnessed Bakugo's final attack of desperation, All Might was relieved as he'd seen Izuku power up and push off his left leg, heading straight for a nearby corridor just as Bakugo released his attack. Since this all happened so quickly, and Izuku's quirk enhanced dodge was so quick there was no chance for the energy to stabilize, much less regulate itself, which meant that Izuku had pushed off with 100% power. He'd have to shift the camera to the other side of the building, since that's where Izuku no doubt ended up, right after he'd order Shoji to stand down since he'd been captured and then get his class to calm down. One of those guys was a speedster, most likely one of the earlier ones said Izuku to himself, as he looked at his broken leg, guess I should be grateful though. The second trait is that in addition to all the power that was accumulated during a generation, one for all also had an echo, for lack of a better term, of each user. Izuku already had brilliant split-second decision-making and analysis skills, and once you stack that with the echoes of eight generations of heroes' battle instincts. Well there was a reason that Izuku was able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Bakugo, someone who spent his whole life training himself in combat, despite only having a month of combat training himself. Of course having such an overpowered quirk in his back pocket tipped the scales slightly in his favor, but things were never really fair. 
Still Izuku really needed to interrogate All Might on the previous users of One For All. He knew one of them was One For All himself. One of them must have been some kind of sharpshooter, or possibly a soldier, considering that Izuku's aim was extremely accurate when he relied on instinct, rather than thought about the shot, and one of them was a speedster. And of course All Might's predecessor was a topic that was to be avoided at all cost considering what happened the first time he tried to bring it up. But beyond that he had absolutely no idea about any of One For All's history. Izuku had managed to pull himself up to his feet and started to slowly hop towards the stairs. No doubt Kirishima was soon going to realize their deception, though what he'd do after the fact was what was going to determine the result of this match. Using his pistol against Kirishima was a disaster waiting to happen. That weapon was meant from precision shots and against someone who was just as stubborn as Bakugo and himself combined. Well, the only way it would work would be if Izuku put his opponent down and he had no intention of killing or mortally wounding Kirishima. He had his tool belt and all the goodies they contained, though he'd never really had time to check each one, forget practice with them, so that was out. It seemed like this was going to come down to a fist fight and with a broken leg and a charred hand, the odds weren't looking good for him. If only he hadn't dropped his shotgun during the fight with Bakugou, he'd be a lot more certain of pulling something off. Bakugo. Was he still around? Izuku desperately wanted to say no, but Bakugo's perseverance and bullheadedness was legendary. Oh well, there was nothing left to do but head to the bomb room and wait for the final showdown. Hiroshima was in a state of panic right now, sheer utter panic. He'd reached right up to the roof and there was no bomb. He then started to run again, backtracking his steps, checking each and every room, again, as he did so. Sixth floor was clear, so was the fifth, so was the fourth. Kirishima jumped down the hole on the third floor and landed on the second. He didn't bother checking it, as he'd personally scouted it, as he searched for materials to make his makeshift springboard. Kirishima couldn't help but stare mouth agape at the state of sheer utter destruction that was the second floor, but that didn't stop him from moving down to the first floor. He jumped down to the ground floor, which was basically a large open hall. Intersped with support pillars, and in the middle of all of that was his target, the nuclear bomb, along with its defender Izuku Midoriya. Izuku looked horrible, there was no other way to put it, he was practically laying down on the ground, using the bomb to support his back. He was bloody, bruised and burnt, and surprisingly had a grin on his face. Tick tock, tick tock, Kirishima said to Izuku, you've got about 20 seconds left. Kirishima ran forward. He didn't have the time to do anything else, he didn't have the time to even think of another way. 10 seconds. Hiroshima could clearly see Izuku's non-burnt arm getting cased with red streaks of power as it started to glow a dark orange. He hardened his body as much as he could without losing any momentum. All he needed to do was touch the bomb, he just needed to touch it and he would win. He needed to withstand Izuku's attack and touch the bomb and victory would be his, all he needed to do. 50% Detroit Smash. Hiroshima had just a second to realize that he'd just underestimated Izuku power and that he'd underestimated it quite badly as well. Before he was blasted back, back to the staircase and almost straight through all the stairs as well. His hardening had prevented his bones from breaking, his muscles from tearing or any really bad damage to be frank, but every inch of his body felt like it had just been put through the ringer. But even then Kirishima knew he could do it, all he knew he could do. Ding ding ding. Hiroshima grinned as he let his body relax. He may have lost today, but creating bad blood was just unmanly. Besides, just because he lost today didn't mean he was going to lose tomorrow. Good job Deku he said out loud, remembering the name that his teammate had used you got us. Hiroshima didn't get a response, nor was he expecting one, as he could clearly see that Izuku had succumbed to exhaustion. But despite that he couldn't help but feel his admiration grow for not just Izuku, but his teammate who'd faced such overwhelming power and yet managed to do so much damage to the future hero in front of him. These two, they really are something else. Alright I'm sure you all know who the MVP is called All Might, but can one of you tell me why? Young Yaoi Rozu. Midoriya's plan was simple, yet effective. He would go and distract Kirishima and Bakugou, while Shoji would use his quirk to scale the building and place the bomb at the level that the team entered from. If they entered from the bottom the bomb would have been placed on the ground floor. If they entered from the top it would be placed on the roof. Furthermore, he goaded Bakugo into following him leaving Kirishima to try and bridge the gap which was the exact opposite of what they should have been doing. During their altercation Midoriya was able to straight up engage in combat with minimal use of his quirk, instead relying on split-second predictions and hand-to-hand -hand skills, and when Bakugo decided to brag about his weapon, he used that opening to destroy it and send him flying back. Lastly his sheer grit and determination was in and of itself amazing. 
Despite all the damage he'd undertaken during his battle with Bakugo, he was still able to pull himself up and get to the bomb so he could prepare a final defense, despite all the pain he must undoubtedly have been in and the fact that he seemed barely able to move. Indeed said Shoji if it wasn't for Midoriya's sheer willpower, then there is no doubt that we would have lost that match. So what could you have done better? Ask All Might. Huh? I have an assignment for all of you. All Might addressing the entire class today when you reach home, I want you to all think about your match. For those of you who lost I want you to think of how you could have acted to get yourself a victory, and for those of you who won, I want you to think on your mistakes and identify places where you could have improved so that your victory could have been easier. I will be giving these tapes to Izawa so you can speak to him if you want to rewatch your performance, and I want at minimum, a 500 word essay on what you could have done better, understood. Yes, sensei. Good, now for the next match, the All Might the Hero team of young Aoyama and young Ishido will face off against the villain team of young Ichako and young Ida. Thanks for watching my video and make sure to check out the author of this fanfic, link is in the description, see you next time, till then sayonara.